Well, moms, before we go too much further, I want to be honest with you. Um, Mother's Day is a little bit embarrassing to me in this sense. Um, when I think about all that moms have done for us, literally giving us physical life, right? We wouldn't exist without you. Um, keeping us alive all these years. None of us would have teeth in our mouth, by the way, if it weren't for our mothers. We would never have brushed our teeth. We would not have graduated any school. We've never gone to school if it weren't for you. Like all the things that you've done and you get like part of one day a year uh, to kind of celebrate you a little bit. And on that day, I have to threaten my children with the, the threat of death to get them to make a card for their mother. I'm like, it is so embarrassing how little we do for you. I was actually reflecting on my life like as a child and as a son. I just think I was an awful son in so many ways. So moms, we're just, I'm, on behalf of all the people that have moms in their lives and mother figures in their lives, thank you, thank you, thank you for your grace and your mercy and your kindness for us. We hope you feel just a little bit celebrated today in the ways that you deserve. And for all of you, um, I'm just really glad that you're here today. Um, the fact that you're here today, I want you to think about this just for a second. It says something about you. It says that you wanna grow. It says that you wanna change. It says that you wanna be a better version of who you are. And so I, I really wanna encourage you to lean into this moment. I think what we're gonna talk about in the next few minutes is unbelievably important. If I told you that the way of life that we're currently living in our culture, in our world, if I told you that's not going very well, that wouldn't be shocking information to you, would it? Right, if, if I told you pretty much everybody you know is stressed out and they're on a path to burnout, like that, that wouldn't shock you or surprise you, right? That wouldn't be new information. Maybe it would be, honestly, because maybe you're so tempted to feel insecure about your own battles and you tend to think everybody around you actually has it together. But can I just tell you, I've been doing this for a really long time. You are surrounded by screwballs, right? They are just as goofed up as you are. I can promise you that if you look to your right and your left, you would feel way better about yourself if you really knew their stories. Because it's just true of all of us. Now, when we talk about burnout, this is how we've been defining burnout. Burnout is when your soul can no longer bear the weight of your life. When your soul can no longer bear the weight of your life. I heard some young parents the other day say, it feels like my life is Groundhog Day just over and over and over again. It's just the same thing every day. And those of us with older kids go, yes, I know that's true, but that quickly, all that is gonna be over, but it feels like you're just kind of making it through the day. Most of us need caffeine to get going. Many of us need alcohol to chill out. Like most of us struggle to thrive on our own. And, and I wanna tell you why that is. This is incredibly important. And I don't know if you've embraced this yet, but this is what this entire series is all about. It's because when you live your life to the limit, you no longer enjoy your life. When you live your life maxed out capacity at every area, you no longer enjoy your life. And that is literally one of the biggest takeaways of this entire series is for us to stop and pause and evaluate like where, where are we in all of this? Because this way of life that's happening in our society right now, we're calling it the burnout society because that's what it's doing in people's lives. If you're not aware of this, most people, most people around you, they are stressed out. They are overweight, they are overmedicated, they are in debt, they are relationally shallow, and they are seeking temporary pleasures over and over and over. That's what this way of life is doing to most of our society. And, and if that feels like an exaggeration, but it feels like, hey, preacher man, why don't you chill out just a little bit, right? It's not all that bad. I mean, just ask yourself a couple of honest questions. We talked about these last week. If you missed last week's message, you've got to go back and watch it. Absolutely phenomenal message. Why can't we put these down for a day? The thought of putting this down for a week would send many of us into like a panic attack. Like we are stuck with these and they are stuck on us. Why can't we be content and stop buying things? If I told you to go a, a, a month, two months, only buy your necessities, buy nothing else that you don't need, no Amazon Prime, period, nothing else that you don't need, it would literally feel impossible for many of us, wouldn't it? Let me ask you this. Why are our kids so anxious? Why are we? 
It's because we're living inside the context of a society, a culture, a way of life that isn't leading to human flourishing. It's not working. And here's what I don't know if you know. Do you know, A, it hasn't always been this way here, where we live right now. It hasn't always been this way. And it's not this way everywhere right now. Everybody on the planet isn't living the way we're living. And the people even in our country didn't always live this way, but we're in a moment and we're trying to get you to stop and evaluate and reflect on what is this moment doing to me and how am I responding to this moment? Here's something else we all know. It's actually not just happening to you and I individually, it's happening to us nationally, right? If you back up and and look at our country, I mean, I believe we live on the greatest piece of real estate in the world. I don't believe any other country on the planet has a better piece of real estate than the United States of America. It is absolutely beautiful here. We have so many incredible resources. We have so many freedoms. I mean, this is just an absolutely incredible place. And yet, we are, listen, you're in debt. America is trillions of dollars in debt. Trillions of dollars in debt. We completely distrust our public health system. We have in our country a billion dollar porn industry supported by the people of our country. We have a very high divorce rate. Last week, Josh Bain reminded us and taught some of us for the first time probably in American history, teens are killing themselves at a higher rate than they're killing one another. Can you... Can you Put that category in your mind. Does that, does that even make sense? Our, our divorce rate is high. Our kids are anxious. People are attending church less than they ever have in, in a really, really long time. I, I don't know if you get the idea. I know it sounds like I'm being a bit extreme. I'm just telling you, this way of life isn't working. It's not leading to human flourishing. So if you're feeling any of this, you're like, John, I wasn't feeling it until I got in here. Now I'm feeling it really badly. That's honestly one of the purposes of church is to stop and think and evaluate. That's what makes you so wise to show up here because you turn off the noise just for a minute to actually think and to actually evaluate and to think some deep and some honest thoughts. So if you're thinking any of that, I'm so glad you're here because this series is about what on earth can we do about it? And that's what we've been talking about for the last several weeks. And one of the things ultimately we've said is this, we've said that, Your life plan, your current life plan is perfectly designed to give you the life results that you're getting right now, right? If you're in financial debt, well, your life plan is leading you in that direction. You're thinking, I don't have a plan. That might actually explain a little bit of it right there, right? That might be a little bit of the answer to your situation. Your relational realities, your life plan is perfectly designed. My life plan is perfectly designed to give me the outcomes that I'm getting. So that's why we've been encouraging you to develop a burnout prevention plan. So we gave these out on the way out last week. We have more of these at our guest services desk. We've also got the QR code in front of you and you can download those as well. But here's essentially what we're saying. We're saying, We've talked about technology, we've talked about time, we've talked about finances, we've talked about rest. I mean, we've talked about so many of these important things. And you and I, if we wanna live differently, if we want different results, if we wanna be different than everybody else around us, if we don't wanna be stressed out, burned out all the time, then we've gotta choose a different way of life. But that's your choice. And that's why I'm so glad that you're here to think about all of this. So today on Mother's Day, here's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about how all of this is affecting our relationships. Because I believe if we ask the moms in our lives, what do you want most? They would say, I want really meaningful, deep, rich relationships among our family and among the people in our community. And so that's what we're gonna think about. Now, our temptation is to think that, well, the reason that we don't have better relationships is because of our schedules, right? We're just too busy. We just don't have time to do all the things that we wanna do. But John Ortberg says this, and I love it. John Ortberg says, hurry is not just a disordered schedule. Hurry is a disordered heart. Hurry is not just a disordered schedule. Hurry is a disordered heart. Now, let me tell you how I know that that's true because I've experienced it. If you could rewind the clock about 11 years, 
and you were to look at my life from the outside looking in, you would go, oh my goodness, I'm being serious. You would go, this guy really has life together. Uh, Bonnie and I had just gone to Italy for our 20th anniversary, which was absolutely amazing. We just built a house uh, with three beautiful kids and everything from the outside looked good. Everything. Kids were thriving, doing you know, well in all the different environments. And, and uh, I was weighed less than I do right now. And life was good in many ways. But on the inside, there was more hurt than most people knew. Um, I would say that our marriage was loving and it was committed, but it wasn't very intimate. And I would say the same thing about my relationship with my kids. I loved my kids with all of my heart. Um, I did my very best as a father, but uh, the truth is I was hurting the people that I loved more than I knew. I was leading my children more than I was loving my children. I was harsh, I was critical, um, I was impatient. I had almost no tolerance for things being messed up or out of order. And when you're a father of three kids, that is a terrible combination because everything is always messed up and out of order. That's the nature of life um, with you know, children and young children. And the truth is I would um, erupt in anger because I didn't know how to manage my emotional life. I didn't understand. I just didn't really know how much I was hurting the people that I loved and I didn't want to. I had no desire to hurt them. But the truth is there were some broken things on the inside of me that I did not have the ability to control on my own. Um, I, uh, I know all that sounds like a really delightful person to be married to, doesn't it? Um, that's why my wife deserves a medal, by the way. So if you see her, feel free to give her one. Um, now, I, I do want to say this for those of you that have any sort of wiring like mine. I'm a strong, driven personality. And in, in recent years, I've come to understand that's not a mistake. God didn't do that by accident. God designed me the way that he did on purpose. But learning how to live as this person in a way that's also full of the Holy Spirit and healthy has been a long-term journey for me. And my mentor told me this years ago, and it has really stuck with me. He said, Sean, when our wiring and our wounds come together, it can be a dangerous combination. Our wiring and our wounds can be a dangerous combination. And that was absolutely the truth for me. So my amazingly courageous wife, 2012, reached out to my mentor, unbeknownst to me, and to my two best friends, my two accountability partners. And for almost a year, I felt incredibly defensive. It, it, you know what it's like probably at some point in time in your life to feel accused of something. And in your mind, that's not how you see it. And so you begin to deflect and you begin to you know, give all these other reasons um, for why things are the way they are. And eventually, um, after a number of months of me, probably the better part of a year, um, not owning much of this, struggling to own much of this, the elders of our church got involved and they were absolutely amazing. And they encouraged me to take a sabbatical. Um, a sabbatical is essentially kind of church language for taking about two months off um, of church work just to focus on me. And honestly, that absolutely terrified me. It terrified me because I didn't really know what was going on inside me. And truth be told, guys, I was scared to find out because I just didn't know that I, I, I didn't know that I would know what to do with it. I, I don't know if I felt like I would run into a brokenness that was irreparable. I, I don't know what I thought I was going to find. But I want to tell you that by the grace of God and by the nudging of our elders and the people in my life, I did it. And I am so incredibly thankful that I did because God met me in that season in a way he's never met me before. And it's probably because I finally opened my hands and finally opened my heart um, in the middle of all my fear and gave him a chance to do it. So I could literally spend hours, I have, I've been on multiple podcasts and talked to multiple people about this. I could spend hours telling you about all that God did in my life, but to save you just a little bit of time, I wanna just tell you three things that God did in me. And these are some things I hope that you can jot down and pay attention to. I want you to take these as like lessons from a guy who almost blew up his life and everything that he values. Um, and uh, I, I want us to kind of, you know, build off these for a second. So here, here's three things um, that I learned during this time. The first is this. My past 
isn't behind me. My past is inside of me. And here's what that means. It means whatever you have done or was done to you, even though that is in your past, the remnants of that are still living inside of you and they're still affecting you every day of your life, whether you know it or not. And I heard an author say, what we don't know about our soul can and will hurt us. And so God helped me to recognize that, to acknowledge that. The second part is this, that um, when my soul is healthier, and this was a discovery for me, my life is more enjoyable and my relationships are more intimate. And I wanna say that as a really hopeful idea to you today, that God can do something in you and you can move to a healthier place where your relationships can be better and your life can be more enjoyable. And here's the, the last one that I hope that just kind of lands on you and gives you a little bit of hope and a little bit of inspiration today. And that is, it is possible. It is possible to heal and grow your soul. Now, when I talk about the soul, people define that in a lot of different ways. Um, here's how ultimately I'm defining it. Our soul is the combination of our mind, our will, and our emotions. Our, our, our soul ultimately is our mind. It's all the thoughts that go through our mind. It's our will. It's where we make choices and decisions. And it's our emotions. It's kind of the combination of all those things come together. I heard somebody say recently, now we know that women have way more emotions than men, right? Men don't have that many emotions. They said, as long as you don't include lust or anger, then men really don't have any emotions at all, right? So, uh, but I think we have to include those. So uh, we definitely have emotions as well. But here's ultimately, folks, this is ultimately what I came to tell you this morning. God has designed us as holistic beings. I wanna read this how I wrote it. The lives we live in our bodies are driven by what's happening in our souls. And whether we know it or not, we live from the inside out. The burnout society lives from the outside in, but real life is lived from the inside out, which leads to a massively important question that I hope you will have the courage to ask. And it's totally up to you. It's between you and God. But here's the question. What's the condition of your soul? Right now, what's the condition of your soul? Do you know the answer to that? The answer to that question is actually called self-awareness. And self-awareness is the beginning. All growth, almost all growth begins with self-awareness. And, and you know this, but the society that we live in wants us running so fast and at such a shallow pace, right? Skinning right across the top of the water, right across the top of life, that it wants us to never look at what's going on inside of us. But I love the way John Eldridge talks about our interior lives. John Eldridge says there are at least three layers to our interior lives. He calls them the shallows, the midlands, and the depths, the shallows, the midlands, and the depths. The shallows are, are, are the emails, they're the scores, they're the weather, they're the news, they're the social media, all that stuff that's going on. The midlands is, is where your relationships exist. That's where your health is. That's where your money is. That's where the cares of life are. But the depths, the depths is where your longings are. It's where your relationship with God is. That's where your fears and your dreams exist. And you know this, nothing in the burnout society will ever encourage you to explore the depths of your being, nothing. It's gonna keep us living right on the surface at all times. Now, in my experience, it takes time and it takes energy and it takes a quiet space to begin to explore our, the depths of our being, to begin to explore what's going on. But in my experience, if you take time consistently, and if you get alone, and if you get to a quiet place, and if you open your heart to God, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you and will begin to illuminate some things to you and will begin to help you see what's really going on on the inside of you. And, and, and I recognize this, and I wanna just say this, for many of us, that's a really scary thing, isn't it? Because I feel like if I open my soul completely to God, that like he's just sitting there ready to just point out all the things that are broken and messed up and say, fix it and get it together. But can I just tell you this, please, like just as your pastor, as a man who's been walking with Jesus for a long time and studying God's word, listen, that voice is not God. He's not mad at you. 
He's not the reflection of your earthly father. He's the perfection of your earthly father. And he loves you so much that all he wants to do is to illuminate the the painful and broken things inside of you so he can heal them because he wants you to be whole because he knows that real life is lived from the inside out, not from the outside in. And that's why Jesus had all these profound things to say about the soul. And I just wanna show you one of the verses, just one of the verses from Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 16. I love this. Uh, th- this. This idea is so profound. This is what Jesus said. He said, what do you benefit? What do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? As a matter of fact, those last several words, that is anything worth more than your soul, will you say that out loud with me on the count of three? I want us just to all say the words of Jesus and ask this question to ourselves and one another. We're gonna say, is anything worth more than your soul? Ready, one, two, three. Is anything worth more than your soul? Um, with, your outside, with your outside voice, as mom would say, right? Let's say it like that one more time. Ready? One, two, three. Is anything worth more than your soul? You see, here's what Jesus knew. Jesus knew that the world that we live in is constantly focused on the externals. But you know what Jesus knew about your house? It's going to fall apart one day. Jesus knew your car is going to rust one day. Jesus knew your money is gonna be gone one day. Your body is gonna continue to deteriorate. It's gonna get worse instead of better over time. And that's why Jesus said, what I'm here to focus on is the eternal inside, internal part of you. That's the part I care about the most. Jesus would say, the burnout society cares about the external, the way of Jesus cares about the internal. And that's what I'm here to help you with. See, Jesus knew the choices we make and the quality of our relationships and all of our integrity and our sense of joy and our sense of peace, it all flows from the inside of us. So in the remaining minutes that we have together, here's what I wanna, if you got anything to take notes on, I wanna encourage you to jot a couple of these things down. I wanna give you four things that I believe that can help you grow a healthy soul. They can help you grow healthier on the inside. Now, I'm not gonna mention scripture mainly because we talk about scripture all the time around here. Scripture is a a no-brainer. It's a non-negotiable. Like if you wanna be a healthy individual in life, you've gotta have a rhythm for scripture in your life. We have a Bible reading plan. We invite you to join that. Click on the QR code. You can join us at any time. I hope scripture is a regular daily part of your life like it is mine. But I wanna give you four other just ideas um, that can help you develop uh, a healthy soul. And some of these won't be brand new to you at all, but listen, the idea isn't that they're new. The idea is that they're a reality in our lives because just knowing the idea doesn't fix it, right? Doesn't solve our problem. So the first one is this, just, just get a journal. Like if you don't have a journal, a journal is simply a notebook. Use whatever you wanna use, um, but get a journal as a safe place for you to begin to write out and process your thoughts. Let me tell you one of the benefits a journal provides for you. It provides for you a chance to slow down and a chance to think about what's really happening and really evaluate your thoughts. I'm not telling you you have to write in your journal every day. Some of you write in your journal every day, but, but once a week, Is there some time in your life that you slow down and you process your thoughts? We've got some journals in our Athens I Love You store. Uh, If you wanna grab one of those today, um, you're welcome to do that, but use whatever one you want. We just like to make those available. We have Bibles over there as well because we we want you to be able to have the necessary resources um, that help you with that. Um, The second thing that I wanna encourage you to do is to read biblical books, specifically books about the interior life. Let me tell you something. Do you know, if I ask you to all raise your hand right now, if you have an amazing mentor in your life, chances are very few of you would raise your hands. Do you know that through reading books, you can invite mentors into your life? You can develop mentors, wise, godly, gifted, amazing people who can come into your life through the things that they write. And so I wanna encourage you to read biblically-based books that talk about the interior life. So one of these that we're reading right now as a staff is this book called Soul Care. And Soul Care is by a guy named Dr. Rob Reamer. And, and Rob is an incredible guy. And we've actually got those books uh, in, in our store as well. And we just wanna provide those. We wanna make those available to you to begin doing some exploration that you can live from a healthy soul. But reading books like that are so helpful because they give us perspectives that we can't ever get on our own. Number three, build honest friendships. 
We say this all the time, but everybody doesn't need to know everything about your life. They don't, but somebody does. Somebody needs to know everything about your life. Do you have anybody in your life who you can tell 100% of the truth? That's one of the reasons we encourage small groups. Maybe it's one person in your small group that you go to coffee with and say, man, can, can I be honest and tell you some stuff that I don't tell that many people? It is so powerful. I had a situation, I don't remember if it was a year or two years ago, but one of these close guys in my life, something just came to my mind and, and I was reading through the, the book of James and the book of James says, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. I had this past sin come up in my mind and I said, I don't think I've ever confessed that to anyone. I called my friend and said, man, can we meet up? And we met up and in this non-judgmental way, I was able to say, man, I just want to tell you something really bad that I did in my past and, and, and I really regret it and I have a lot of shame around it, but I just want to get it out into the light and get it into the open. Shame thrives in the darkness and in secret. But when you get things out into the light, God's light begins to purify that. And that's an incredible opportunity. The last one of these four is, and I'm saying these words on purpose, pay for Christian counseling. Pay for Christian counseling. Here's why. If I looked at all of your expenses and you looked at all of mine, all of the non-necessary, non-vital things that we have purchased, we'd be able to find a pretty good chunk of money in most of our lives, right? Stuff that we really didn't need, but said we felt like we needed it in that time. You know, my, my buddy says he walks around the mall looking for something to need, right? You walk around Costco looking for something to need. I didn't even know I needed that until I saw it. Now I need that bad. Putting a little bit of that aside to say, I'm going to invest to sit down with a wise, godly counselor who's trained who could begin to help me process the things of my soul could be absolutely life-changing. I don't even wanna tell you how much money I have spent on Christian counseling, but it's worth every single penny because it's helped save my marriage, it's helped save my family, it's helped save my life. So if you get alone in these environments, with a wise, godly person, if you get alone with the Holy Spirit and a journal, if you start reading these great books, if you have an honest person, you're gonna begin to see God build something on the inside of you. Because here's what I know that you don't want. I know that you don't wanna earn a million dollars and lose your marriage. I know you don't want your kid to get the scholarship but not wanna have a relationship with you. I know you don't wanna get into the grad school of your dreams and be addicted to something. You don't wanna gain the whole world and lose your soul. It's not worth it. The trade isn't worth it. We live in a burnout society. We live in a society that doesn't care anything about your soul. Honestly, they just want something from you. They wanna squeeze you for all your worth to get everything out of you that they can. And yet there is a king, there is a savior, there's a Messiah, there's a healer, there's a comforter named Jesus. And not only does he not want anything from you, he gave everything for you. And he said, I've given my life for you. I've paid for all of your sin. If you put your trust in me, you never ever have any debt with God ever again. And then I'm gonna put my spirit inside of you, a new life, a new power, a new desire to walk in righteousness. And with that, I'm gonna to begin to bear my fruit. And God says the fruit I'm gonna bear in your life is love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control. I'm gonna begin growing those things in you from the inside out. But you've gotta realize the culture and the world that you live in is gonna work against that every single day. So you've gotta develop a plan that makes you different. You've gotta manage your time differently. You've gotta manage your money differently. You've gotta manage your relationships differently. You've gotta say, I'm not letting the world, I'm not letting the school district, I'm not letting the sports team, anybody else determine or dictate the way we live our lives. We're going to live in a way that is best for us, for our thriving in the way of Jesus. And yes, 
you're gonna feel like you're swimming upstream because you are. But I can just tell you, as somebody who has been trying my best to live this out for the last decade plus, you're gonna find a greater peace than you could ever imagine. Folks, maybe for the first time in my life, I'm okay with me. I've got peace with who Christ is in me. And I've got a long ways to go, but God has already done a miraculous work. And I just wanna tell you, he wants to do that in you too. He can, he will, no matter how much brokenness you have, no matter how much pain you have, he can do it. Before I pray, I wanna share with you one last verse. It's really interesting. When I was studying this word soul, in the gospel of Matthew, I came across another occurrence of soul. Look at this in Matthew 11, chapter 28. Jesus said this, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And look at the last part of this, and you will find rest for your souls. And most of us Even when we try to rest, we don't feel rested. But Jesus is trying to offer us something so much better and so much different. So can I pray for us? Would you mind just bow your head and close your eyes just for a second? God, I realize this is um, a weighty idea. And honestly, most of us aren't fully sure what steps to take. And that's why we need you right now in this moment, Holy Spirit, to speak to us. We need you to show us what does it look like for us to follow you right now. God, would you put the people in our lives, would you give us the honest friendships who would speak the truth and love into our lives to reflect back to us what they see? God, this can be so hard in our marriages to to hear from one another because of just the hurt and the protection, the self-protection that we're all inclined to have. Would you please give us open hearts and open spirits? And God, would you continue to lead us to a life that lives from the inside out rather than from the outside in? Would you help us to be a different kind of people so that God, broken, wounded people continue to make their way into this church and they continue to find healing and wholeness in Jesus? So God, we love you. We're confident that you can do this. We're asking for the grace that you would do so in our lives. We pray it in Jesus' amazing name. Amen.